Hello everyone, Nate Furley here, Regional Agronomy Manager for Bex Hybrids, covering our western region. Today I want to do a little bit of a deeper dive into a hot topic on today's agricultural market, carbon. The carbon that can deliver you an ROI in your agronomy program, not the carbon credits that is the buzzword of today. Uh, carbon credits have been around for decades, but the recent uh, monetary value that they've really gained is why they've become such a hot topic. Uh, so I'm going to differentiate a little bit between those carbon credits that exist and the carbon products that exist that can be added into our agronomy program. Allow me to tell a little story just to build a little depth behind my journey in carbon over the last 10 years. In February 2009, uh, my brother and I decided to take my father to Florida alligator hunting for his birthday. Uh, my brother at the time it worked for a videography company really focusing on hunts. And so part of the deal is we had to shoot a commercial for the reel we were using on our bow and arrows. And I didn't want to partake in that, neither did my dad. So we were standing off to the side and the local landowner that we were hunting on approached and said, uh, son, what do you do for a living? I said, well, I'm an agronomist for a seed company. He said, really? You're an agronomist? Well, get in the truck. I got to show you something. And I thought to myself, well, I'm not here to work. I'm kind of here to hunt alligators, but I guess we got a little time, so I jumped in the truck. And it was a life-changing moment, one of those connections that we make as humans that really has an impact in the future that you maybe don't know at the time. And what this farmer told me or showed me were two citrus groves on each side of a water canal. And one looked like my trees do in Minnesota in the middle of winter, no leaves, only just tree. And on the other side, a nice green lush grove full of oranges and getting ready to harvest. And he said, since you're an agronomist, he said, tell me what's wrong with that grove. Why it doesn't look like this one? And uh, I thought, well, it's not corn, it's not soybeans. Uh, so I, really, I didn't know. And he said, it's not that hard, young man. One's dead and one's not. And, and really what I gathered out of that was, you know, that sometimes we overlook things in our agronomy programs. And really, I said, what was wrong with that grove? And he said, it's a salt. He said, the more of your snowbirds that you send down here to build retirement communities, the more water pressure is getting taken off our deep wells, allowing ocean water to penetrate those. And this particular well had an EC level about 60% of what ocean water was. And really, he salted his own grove to death because it looked like it had a water deficiency, so he kept adding more salt water to it. The other grove, on the other hand, he had added in a product, a carbon product, to mitigate those salts. It was one of those side-by-sides that we all hope to have on our, tr on our farms when we're trying something new that really stood out with this farmer. Now, I didn't know where that would go, and I thought, well, this is interesting. And he said, well, you got to meet the guy who founded this product. He just lives down the road. And so I ended up meeting him. Uh, long story short, we didn't hunt many alligators that day. I spent a lot of time uh, really learning about what carbon can do in mitigating salts in those Florida citrus groves. And, and really, I learned with this carbon product that you know, they don't just mitigate salts, but they can also hold nutrients, and they're a food source for biology. And, and they really can be beneficial in an agronomy program. So like any good farmer, we decided we'd buy some of that product and try it on our farm. Uh, the manufacturer decided, well, you don't have to buy it. We'll give you some for a couple, couple acres. So dad and I, we did some side-by-sides. And this picture dates back to 2010 when we did our first side-by-side. -side. And where I'm from on our soils, we have heavy salt pockets and high pH soils. And what we noticed is through those high salt, high pH soil pockets, that we saw more stand, better, better stand, more plants, and ultimately it gave us an 11 bushel response in those pockets. When we stretched that across the whole field, we saw a five bushel difference. Now really what this led me to think about was that you know, we saw a yield increase on a crop without adding a fertilizer source, without adding any nutrients. And so it, it really led me on this journey of exploration and, and making research so that we can identify what other products exist out there that are not just our standard MPK or nutrients that we can add to the soil. And so we think about carbon, really carbon is everywhere. Uh, carbon is, is an element that holds a lot of things together. Uh, it, it has the ability to, to carry and deliver. Uh, carbon really is an essential element in life itself. And it dates back as long back as creation. Uh, so when we think of carbon, and I ask farmers, they often think of 
that, that carbon source that we see in rail cars out west, coal. Uh, and, and we maybe think of that or we think of, you know, what we hear today, the carbon in the atmosphere. Uh, for you men out there, some of that carbon is the greatest investment that you've made in your life and for me, the best sale that I've ever made and that's that diamond, that investment or that, that marriage proposal. And, and so carbon holds many different forms. In its purest form, it's in that diamond. It's very hard, very small, compacted, and it has the ability to bind and stay together. When we think of carbon credits, we're talking about the carbon that we can't see, that atmospheric carbon, and that CO2, carbon dioxide. I want to put this graph up here because that carbon dioxide, CO2, is not a bad thing. It's getting a bad rap because of too much CO2. Uh, just like banana cream pie for me, too much becomes a bad thing. And so carbon, CO2, also been around since before man was on this earth. It's a natural part of a cycle that's extremely important for life, especially plant life. And looking at this cycle, we're taking CO2 in this photosynthesis process and converting it into a sugar source, that lifeblood for that plant. That, 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 that life source that's delivering nutrients and helping build tissues. And so that photosynthesis process, without that, we wouldn't have this plant life. And so we think about how much these plants are pulling that CO2 out of the air. They're capturing that carbon and building tissue out of it. And that's really where this carbon sequestration process comes from and why we hear about these carbon credits. Because when we have too much with our factories and our cars and our emissions, we're overloading that atmosphere with CO2, and so we need more plants to draw that out. And so that's what the carbon credit developed from, is that we can go to those factories and say, you're emitting more emissions than what you used to, or than what is at an adequate level or, or an appropriate level, so let's pay forestry or pay agriculture to plant plants that can capture that carbon and put it back into the soil, put it back into the sink. So we're taking money and carbon from the source and putting it into the sink. And what I mean by that sink is what's below ground. And so where I'm from, native prairie soils, we have a lot of carbon. Not to be, not to be confused with organic matter because there's available carbon and then there's organic matter, which is that non-available, that carbon that's gonna stay in that sink for a very long time. Today, we're still farming soils at 5.1 average organic matter, even though they've been plowed and cultivated for decades, being farmed by my fourth, fifth generation uh, grandfather before me. And so you think about some of these native species and how deep those roots can penetrate. Uh, those roots can penetrate dozens of feet deep. And so I like to use the analogy of a car, a car parking ramp. You've got that, that spiral ramp going up. Think of those as our roots. You've got those vehicles going up and down. Think about that as that carbon, that carbon being moved and then placed at different levels on that parking ramp. Same thing is happening with that soil, capturing that CO2, moving it through that plant as it builds tissue and then storing it at different depths and levels in the soil, really creating that sink. And so the more vegetation we have, the more CO2 we draw, the more money uh, that that value has for that growing crop. That's the carbon credit uh, po policy or the carbon credit uh, availability to farmers and forestry that exists today. What excites me more personally is the agronomy application of carbon itself. There are products that exist on the market. We've tested many of them through practical farm research that can help deliver the benefits of carbon in an agronomy application. Uh, for example, we'll start with the, the ability to eliminate those heavy metals or tie up those salts. So we think of all the things that we're doing. Salt is the main carrier in a lot of our herbicides and in a lot of our fertilizers. So how is that soil mitigating that salt? How are we starting to try and reduce those salt loads? Carbon can be a, a really great addition to that. And I'm reminded of, of northern Minnesota. So this is the Temperance River. Uh, right on the shores of Lake Superior in northern Minnesota, my home state, where my wife and I really like to go vacation. Uh, along with the Temperance River, there's a Cascade River and many other rivers flowing into Lake Superior. And as you know, the Great Lakes don't have salt. They're freshwater lakes. And I always wondered, you know, how does that 
fresh water not get penetrated by all that salt water? How is there that existence from fresh to salt that exists? When we have barges and ships leaving Duluth and hauling our materials all the way around to that ocean. And an aha moment hit me when we were on a walk along that Cascade River. See, all the rivers that flow into Lake Superior are dark. And actually, there's a sign along the Cascade River that says, why do all the rivers look like root beer? And really, they look that way because all of that watershed coming into Lake Superior and along the shores of Michigan and the other Great Lakes travel through peat bogs, and they collect humic substances, carbon. Collecting that humic substance and carbon elevates that carbon level in Lake Superior and all the Great Lakes, creating where it hits the ocean almost a barrier where you actually, they have proof of fish swimming right up to some of these salt reef barriers. And so uh, I'm always fascinated by nature and I think of you know, God's just creation and, and these things happened long before we were able to put signs up there that explain it. Carbon delivering through those river into the fresh water, just eliminating those heavy metals and those salts in that fresh water, keeping in fresh water lakes. And so I think about it as an, the ability to hold. It has the ability to, to really kind of mitigate some of those, those um, negative effects of our fertilizers or our chemicals. Uh, the second thing, increasing nutrient water holding capacity. Carbon has the ability to hold. Uh, carbon's been proven to hold all forms of specifically our nitrogen fertilizers. So think of UAN three different forms of nitrogen in one. Okay, we talk about splitting nitrogen all the time. UAN itself is a great source of nitrogen because it has multiple different uh, formulas or multiple different sources of nitrogen in there. So not just splitting the timing, but splitting the form of nitrogen as well. Well, carbon has the ability to hold those, which means that it holds them from moving, it holds them from leaching, keeping them to a soil particle, putting them where we want them. And that leads me to what we tested in practical farm research, and that's our starter additives. And you'll find that our starter additives, we tested three products, Humica, Fee Sidekick, and CarbonWorks Cetane over the last four years. New in 2021 was CarbonWorks Cetane, all of them a nitrogen additive, but what stands out to me is that both carbon products that are nitrogen additives had the highest ROI. And so a carbon or a nitrogen additive here adding nutrients, carbon additives on the sides adding no additional nutrients, just making that solution a little more uh, friendly for the soil. Plants may be a little more receptive to it. And you'll find uh, in our 2021 PFR book actually descriptions of these different products, which does raise a key point. There are many different carbon products. I've tested over 26 different humic or fulvic products in the last 10 years and found no two to be alike. Some of them still contain a lot of those heavy metals that they are so good at binding up and holding. And so it's important to really understand the source of carbon or product that you're using. Finally, what's really beneficial from from the carbon in the agronomy program uh, that we've seen some really good response to that probably excites me the most because it fits into this biological realm. You know, what are we doing in this biological market? Are we adding biology to the soil or are we stimulating it? Are we feeding the biology? And that's what carbon becomes. It becomes a food source for that, for that molecule. It also helps hold some water to the soil particles, allowing for more oxygen to stay in the soil. And so when you think of soil biology, I like to ask this question, you know, for us as humans, you know, what would kill us first? The lack of which one of these would kill us first? And the answer is pretty clear. It's oxygen. We can go maybe two, three weeks without food, maybe a week or two without water, but we can't go very long without oxygen. And so when you think of that soil biology, we think about, you know, what limits them as well, and it's oxygen. Uh, the picture there shows some nitrogen deficient corn at V6. That corn actually has 400 pounds of nitrogen applied to it. It was a study I did a number of years ago on really wet, heavy, saturated soil. And we saw nitrogen deficiency, so we tried to cure it with more nitrogen. The reality is, is we could have put more and more and more on, but the biology that convert that nitrogen to plant available lacked oxygen. The soil had too much water in it. And so these higher carbon soils are adding carbon to some of our low carbon con containing soils can help hold some more of that water. And so it's all about the balance. It's all about balancing that food source, the oxygen, the, the energy the, the, that comes from water. It's all about finding that balance. And again, thinking about that biological process, 
There's a lot of things we don't know. There's a lot of the things we don't know about the biology that exists. We think we're getting pretty good at this nitrogen one, knowing that Nitrosomonas and Nitrobacter are two of the key bacteria. But again, for them to work, they need that balance of water, oxygen, and food. So what are some of the products that we can put out there that will stimulate, will feed as that food source for the biology? And it's simple, they're sugars. When we think of table sugar, what we might sprinkle on our food to sweeten it up a little bit, it's a simple C6H12O6. There's carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And we go back to that photosynthesis process, that plant-built sugar is actually C12H22O11. So we're capturing a lot of that carbon from the CO2, converting it into a, a source of energy for the biology. Uh, it's, it's in the sucrose form. And so when we look at practical farm research, we've been testing sugar products in many different applications. Specifically what we've printed is our foliar applications of sugar. And we saw that all of the sugar products we tested showed a positive yield. These four showed us that positive ROI, earning that practical farm research PFR proven stamp. And so we think about foliars, we think about feeding biology, you know, carbon, that food source form, becomes, a, becomes that source through this C6H12O6, those sugar products, getting that carbon from sugar. So uh, finally, you know, what's the carbon recommendation? Uh, if we're going to explore carbon in an agronomy program, there's really four key things that I want you to take away. Uh, choose a clean carbon product. Know the carbon product that you're using. Uh, it can be very difficult to find some of these, um, but trust in, in data, trust in research. There's a lot of research starting to come out with some of these humix and fulvix and carbon products, but the key is, is choose one that's clean. Choose one that has the ability to hold the most. Uh, use with fertilizer applications. Uh, all of our UAN applications, we're putting in a carbon source, whether it's humica or cetane, to help hold and just to help balance that, that nitrogen cycle out a little bit. Uh, sugar applications, you know, we've actually started to test sugar in our stress mitigation studies here at PFR because there's an, a positive effect on mitigating that stress that Flexstar Cobra would have on that plant, reducing that bronzing that we can see with our eyes. And so sugar has its fit in every foliar application. And then most importantly, use the correct rate. It's just like most products that we have. Don't cut corners on these products. Uh, they're not a big investment to get into, and oftentimes uh, the carbon source in order for it to work properly, it has to be followed to that use rate. So you'll see some carbon products have maybe eight to 12 ounces per acre on a use rate, and some may be at a gallon to a gallon and a half. So whatever manufacturer recommends, use the correct rate to see the best performance out of that. So I hope this helped kind of clear a little bit between what those carbon credits are and what some of the carbon products we can apply in our agronomy program are. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you.